All right. Hey, good morning, everyone. Happy to have you guys. Um, thank you guys for coming on. I hope everybody had a great weekend. We had a great question from Amanda asking about where do I source the data from that I get for this particular weekly market update. And I was sharing with her that I actually source it from Trend Graphics, which is a um, a tool that we use to pull numbers from for agents and for the market. So Trend Graphics does both. It pulls like production of the different agents across our um, industry. And it also pulls um, information related to um, our, you know, our industry, uh, the market. But as an individual agent, we all have access to um, uh, to the information through uh, um, InfoSparks and RPR. And so I'm going to share my screen right now with you guys just to show you guys. And this is all of you guys on this call, I think, except for Manzarat. Um, probably has access to this. And Monza, you will have access to this as soon as you become a member of the DAOR, okay? So you guys right here, InfoSparks translates data into graphs and charts for your clients, right? And then RPR creates client reports and MLS ancillary data from all 50 states. So literally, you guys, you can go into RPR or InfoSparks, whichever one. I think Diana is likes InfoSparks. Um, over RPR. Um, I like them both, just depends on what I'm looking for. Okay. So you go into RPR and then you can pull data for any market that you're looking for. So if you want to report, right, a property report, a flyer or a seller's report, a valuation, a neighborhood report, so this goes by property or neighborhood. So you can put in zip codes. If you want market trends, look at here, you can look at market trends. And then it'll take you through a little tutorial so that you can really understand what you're, what you're getting. But I would suggest that you guys carve out some time to play with both of these because they're very valuable. They can give you a lot of detail on um, what's going on in the different markets, market trends, especially, um, I would look at that one. Uh, you can create a CMA in here, right? You can do some prospecting in here. So, I mean, it could give you a lot. We have so much at our disposal that we don't even really use. Okay. So, uh, make sure that you guys are looking at that and getting familiar with that. That's a great question. Um, uh, Amanda, thank you so much for asking. Um, because I think that we overlook the fact that you guys have got some data at your fingertips, you know, that we are not using. All right. So thank I'm going to, again, I'm sorry. What'd you say? Who was that? I just said, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if you need help, like, you know, Hey, I don't still don't quite get it. Let me know. All right. So thank let's you. get started. Um, we have got TCPA uh, compliance is always a thing. We always want to make sure that we are aware of it um, and that you guys are staying TCPA compliant. Um, and then let's get into Los Angeles County. So LA County, you guys, for sale properties gone up um, over last month, which is great. Um, and then overall up 44%. So we have more inventory on the market now to the tune of 44% than we did last year as compared to last year. So definitely we are seeing um, inventory start rising. Um, and and therefore, as you can see, we, we have more sales to the tune of 1.1% over last year. Um, however, compared to last month, we're actually down 11.9%. Okay, but overall, we're still up 1.1%. So that's good. So sold properties, properties that have actually closed escrow has still increased in LA County. Pended properties are down 8.3% over last month, um, up 11.1% over last year, same time frame in um, September. And basically, this is the end, right? Because we're this today is the last day of September. Um, so really counting yesterday. But we are going to have some closings today. You know, um, some counties you can fund and record on the same day. Um, and in L.A. County, it is we do fund on one day, record on the next day. 
However, they can record special, okay? Um, I think um, Walter even did it last week on Friday because he had he had to get something closed. Um, so he was able to go ahead and do that and it's called a, a special recording. So if you have to do that in LA County, you can just know that. Um, just know that it's not commonplace to do that, okay? So we will have some closings today that will impact these numbers. However, you can look at this as, uh, it probably won't be substantial. So you can look at this as the month end numbers for September. So um, overall, pendants were up 3.4% over last year. Okay, so again, three out of three of our sales trend, major sales trends in Los Angeles County are in the green, which means they are positive moving in the right direction. So that's a good thing. And then new listing inventory um, decreased 6.2% over last month. However, it increased 16.8% overall over last year, which is great because again, this shows us that we are we are increasing um, in inventory and that's been um, the major um, hindrance in our, in, in our sales is inventory, just not having enough for our buyers and LA County is actually leading us in, um, in having more inventories. So that's great. So average active price is down 1.5% over last month, down 10.2% over last year, same time frame in September and down 10.2% overall. So average active price sellers in LA County are asking for 10.2% less than they did last year. However, we always look at what are they receiving? So they're receiving 2.8% higher than they did last month, and they're receiving 4.5% higher than they did last year, which is great. So in LA County, don't let people tell you that um, house prices have skyrocketed, right? They have actually gone up modestly 4.5% over last year, okay? Although they're asking 10.2% less than they did last year, they're only, they're receiving 4.5% higher. And so what does that mean? Be hyper-focused because in some areas in LA County, they're receiving probably 10% higher. And in some, they're receiving less than what they did last year. So you've got to be hyper-focused on your neighborhood. That's where RPR and the Info Sparks is going to help you. Because you can look up this data specific for that home and around that home, that neighborhood, or you can look up that specific city and give your buyer or your seller information on that, okay? All right, so months of inventory went up 22.3% over last month. So we were at 2.7 months of inventory. Last month, we are at 3.3 months of inventory currently. Again, that's the same as what it was last week, okay? It was up, it was 3.3 months of inventory last week. So just because, just so you guys know, it has not moved. Um, now, Overall, we're up 45.1% because last year we were at 2.2 months of inventory and currently we are at 3.2 months of inventory. Again, same as it was last uh, last week, we we're at 3.2 months of inventory. So again, we are moving in the right direction clearly over last year um, and we're still moving in the right direction overall because we're not going down in months of inventory. We are still going up or staying the same. So LA County is doing well. We are close we're, we're inching closer to that four months of inventory. Remember, that's what makes us a normal market, which means that buyer demand and seller supply is actually in alignment, okay? That's what that means. Having that four months of inventory means that we have enough inventory to meet the demands of our market. We're in a, we're in a normal market, a more normal market, okay? All right, average days on market has gone up 10.3%. So uh, last month, uh, yeah, last month we were at 29 days on market. Currently we're at 32 days on market. Overall, we've gone down 9.1% because last year we had 33 days on market and currently we are at 30 days on market. All righty. And then sold versus original list price, we are down 3.1%. We were at 98% of list price last month. Currently, we're at 95% of list price. However, overall, we are at we are increased by 1%. So last year, we were at 97% of list price. Sellers were getting 97% of their list price. Currently, um, sellers are receiving 98% of their list price. So sellers are happy in LA County because they are receiving close to 100% of their 
of their list price, okay? So that definitely is a good thing. Our sellers are happy. Let's look at Orange County. Orange County is up 1.3% over last month. For sale properties is up 1.3% over last month. 56.6% overall as compared to last year, we have increased. So that's huge, right? That's almost a 60% increase over last year, which means that we were just extremely um, scarce on inventory last year if for a 60% increase. And still, Orange County is still in a um, seller's market. And you guys will see that uh, when we look at the days on market. I'm sorry, not days on market, but our um, absorption rate. When we look at that, you guys are going to see that the we are still in a seller's market and still need more inventory to come into alignment or to or to get closer to that normal market. Okay, um, sold inventory has gone down fifteen point eight percent. I'm sorry, sold inventory solds have gone down fifteen point eight percent over last month. Um, ten point nine percent decrease over last year. Same time frame in. September and a 2.2% increase overall. So we have increased in sold. So we um, um properties that have actually closed escrow has increased 2.2% and over last year. So that's great. And looking at pendants, we have gone up 2.6% over last month, up 10% over last year, same time frame in um September. So so basically September, we're going to end 10% higher than we did last last year, same time frame, right? And then an increase of 3.5% overall as compared to last year, okay? So properties that have actually gone into escrow has gone up 3.5%. So again, in Orange County, three out of three of our, mark, of our major sales trends has increased moving in the right direction for us. Let's look at new listing inventory. New listing inventory has gone down 18.7%. As compared to last month, down two percent, um, as compared to last September, and then up fourteen point six percent still overall as compared to last year. So new listing inventory is still on the rise um, overall. So that's really that's a really good sign. Okay, now average active price has gone down one point nine percent as compared to last month. Um, down 4.8% overall as compared to last year and as compared to last September. So average active price, um, Orange County sellers are actually asking on average less than they were last year to the tune of 4.8%. However, let's look at what they're receiving. They're receiving 6.6% 6 .6 higher than they did last year. I'm sorry, last month. Okay, even though they're asking 1.9% lower, they're receiving 6.6% higher than they did last month. And they're receiving 10.9% higher overall as compared to last year. So we're in double digits in Orange County, which we would expect, right? We would expect that. Why? Why do we expect to be in double digits in Orange County? Anybody can hop off and give me, give me their guess. Is it because um, there's the lowest inventory there? That's awesome, Amanda. And that's right. Exactly right. Because there's still a scarcity of inventory in Orange County. And although they've increased quite a bit, right? We saw that in our previous slides. They've increased quite a bit in inventory. The reality is, is they still are, uh, they still are in a, a severe seller's market, right? Hence this slide right here. So, in Orange County, in inventory, months of inventory has actually increased 20.5% over last month. Last month, we were at two, two months of inventory. We're currently at 2.4 months of inventory, right? So excellent that we're moving in the right direction, right? And overall, as compared to last year, look at that. We were at 1.4 months of inventory. There was hardly any inventory on the market in Orange County. Now we're at 2.1 months of inventory, which is a 50% increase right? That's huge. However, it still only puts us at 2.1 months of inventory. We're, we're two months of inventory shy of being even it, being in that normal market range, right? So with that said, of course, there's going to be 
um, double digit more than likely increases in, in the prices and in appreciation because we're bidding up those homes. There's probably still multiple offers going um, in Orange County um, and, and prices are still getting bid up. So although sellers are, are asking less than they did the previous year, they're receiving double digit um, appreciation and double digit, you know, um, yeah, double digit appreciation because there's still a scarcity of inventory and buyers are having to outbid each other, right? So that is definitely the case in Orange County. Um, so just let your buyers know what the market looks like in Orange County so that they don't go in um, with those rose colored glasses thinking that they're going to get a deal in Orange County. There are no deals in Orange County more than likely, okay? All right, so average days on market has gone up 4% over last month. We were at 25 days on market last month. We're at 26 days on market currently. And then overall, it's gone down 20% because last year we were at 30 days on market and currently we are at 24 days on market, okay? Sold versus original list price, no change over last month. We're at 97% of list price. Sellers are still receiving 97% of list price. 1% um, decrease. Um, in the month of September as compared to last September, okay? 98% of list price again this month and, or I'm sorry, last month. Currently, we are getting 97% of list price currently. So 98% of list price last September, I'm sorry, uh, of 2023. And currently, we're getting 97% of list price in September 2024, all righty? And then 1% increase overall as compared to last year. So last year, this time frame, we sellers were receiving 97% of their list price. Currently, sellers are receiving 98% of their list price as compared to last year, okay? So sellers are happy in Orange County because they are receiving 98% of their list price. And as I've said multiple times during the, these discussions or, or this particular segment, um, we are the primary influencers over that number right over that sales price. So we provide our sellers with the comparables. We provide them with the reasoning as to why to price their property a certain way. Now, sometimes we have those unreasonable sellers who want to price it whatever they want to price it because they feel like they ha their house should be way above everybody else. I get that. However, for the most part, we deal with reasonable sellers, right? And we're able to influence that sales price, which means that we can get our sellers 100% of list price if we list the property for the right price. And we can produce um, we can produce a situation with, where they are receiving multiple offers and we're creating that bidding effect. So we may be able to even get them over what they actually listed for. All righty. Any questions on that? Any questions on those numbers? Anything I said? All right, let's keep pushing. Riverside County, let's look at those numbers. So Riverside County, for sale properties has increased 9% um, over last month. Properties that are actually on the market has increased 9% over last month, has increased 47.3% at um, in, in September as compared to last September and increased 47.3% overall, okay? So- the reality is, is that in Riverside County, inventory has definitely gone up 47.3%, which is keeping in line with all the other counties. We're going to see that also in San Bernardino County, that inventory has definitely gone up. Sold properties has gone down 14.4% as compared to last month and down 7.2% as compared to last year, same time frame in uh, September, and down slightly 0.3%. Um, as compared overall, as compared to last year, if I remember correctly, last uh, month or last week, when we looked at Riverside, we were still three out of three were in the green and now our solds have actually gone down. Okay. So this kind of keeps in line with the forecast or with the um, news media that we, that I shared last week where they said August um, and September were a little bit sluggish as compared to what we um, had last year, right? And they're talking about our solds um, or properties that have actually closed. Our closings were a little bit more sluggish 
than they anticipated. And they're expecting that our fall, which we hit, we're hitting tomorrow, right? October, November, December, fall, winter. Um, we're expecting that our, that our fall is going to actually produce uh, more sales. So we'll be tracking that, right? We actually are tracking that week by week. So we'll be able to see if we're rebounding or not, okay? However, right now, souls are down 0.3%. Now it's a small dip, but it's still a dip. So we'll keep track of that. All right, pendants are down 0.3% as compared to last month, um, up 14.1% as compared to um, last no, last sep September, and then up 1.5% overall as compared to last year. So we have actually increased in pendants, properties that have actually gone into escrow 1.5% over last year. All right, new listing inventory has gone down 11.9% as compared to last month. Uh, down 2.1% as compared to last September and up for, I'm sorry, increased 2.1% as compared to last September and up 14.8% overall as compared to last year. So that's great. New listing inventory has actually gone up. And that's what we expect, right? We expect new listing inventory to continue to rise or at least because we started at such a strong point at the beginning of the year. So basically all these small hits that we're taking um, we are, it's being absorbed um, because we had such a big cushion. So that's great. We're seeing um, new listing inventory still hang tough um, and increase 14.8% over last year. All right, average active price has gone, let's see, average active price has gone down 2.3% as compared to uh, last year, I'm sorry, last month. Um, and then over across the board, it's all down 2.3%, right? So average active price has actually gone down 2.3% um, across the board. So as compared to last September and as compared to last year overall, okay? So sellers are receiving 2.3% less than they did last year, which is not much, right? I'm sorry, sellers are asking less than they did last year to the tune of 2.3%. However, they're receiving last month, as compared to last month, they're receiving 0.8% less than they did last month. They're receiving 0.8% less than they did last September. And they are receiving 5.6% higher than they did last year. So although they're asking 2.3% less, they're receiving 5.6% more, which again, it's a modest return, which is great, right? That's a normal amount of return, 5.6% is a normal amount of return. So that's great. All right. Months of inventory is up 32.2% as compared to last month. So last month we were at 2.8%. I'm sorry, 2.8 months of inventory. La uh, this month we're at 3.7 months of inventory. So Riverside County is closer to that four months of inventory normal range, right? So that's great. And an increase of 60.4% as compared to last September. So last September, we were at 2.3 months of inventory, currently at 3.7 months of inventory. However, overall, we are at 3.1 months of inventory, which is a 47.4% increase as compared to last year. Last year, we had two months of inventory, which is extremely low. Currently, we are at 3.1 months of inventory in Riverside County. So again, inching closer um, to that four months of inventory threshold that we need to be in a normal market or to be considered a normal market. And remember, that's just the beginning of the normal market, that four months of inventory. So let's look at average days on market. Average days on market has gone down 2.5% as compared to last month. We are at 40 days on market last month. We're at 39 days on market currently. And then overall, a 8.9% decrease last year. We were at 45 days on market. Currently, we are at 41 days on market. So sold versus original list price, we're down 1%. We are at 97% um, of list price last month. Currently, we are at 96% of list price. Sellers are receiving 96% of their list price. Overall, sellers, there's no change. So last year, sellers were getting 97% of their list price, currently receiving 97% of their list price. So again, that is 97% of their list price is still a great percentage. And again, because we influence that, we can help our sellers to do even better than that over, you know, do better than that 97%. But this is a good number that you guys can 
again, utilize when you're talking to your entire database, right? Because your entire database, we don't know where they are at in Riverside County, San Bernardino County, LA or Orange County. We don't know where they specifically live at. And unless you created this video for them specifically, you would know. But if you're talking to your database, your database probably spans all over. So you can give these broad-based numbers and then and say, call me if you would like to know more about your specific neighborhood or if you'd like numbers for your home, right? So you can actually utilize this to generate a conversation to your within your database. All right, let's look at San Bernardino County. For sale properties has gone up 4% over last month, 35.5% increase compared to last uh, September and a 35.5% increase overall. So for sale properties have definitely gone up, but not as much as the other counties in San Bernardino County. Everybody else was in the 40 to 50% range increase. Uh, San Bernardino County is in 35.5% increase. Sold properties has gone down 9.4% um, as compared to last month, down 6% as compared to last September, and then down 2.2% um, overall. So sold properties, properties that have actually closed escrow has gone down 2.2%. Appendants have gone down 16.8% as compared to last month, 5.5% decrease um, as compared to last September, and a 1.1% decrease overall, okay? So we have actually gone down 1.1%. So two out of our three major sales trends in San Bernardino County have actually gone down. We'll continue, and, and only by a little bit, but we will continue to track this so that we can see exactly what, what happens, you know, as we go on in the year. Does Is fall actually going to bring about that rebound that's being predicted? All right, new listing inventory has gone down 19.5% as compared to last month, 7.6% decrease um, over um, as compared to last September, and a 12.2% increase overall as compared to last year. So that's great. Um, new listing inventory is still on the rise. And average active price has gone down 2.9% um, as compared to last month. And a 1.2% decrease as compared to last, uh, last year overall, right? So um, what sellers are asking for, for in, River, in San Bernardino County is 1.2% less uh, than it was last year. However, they're receiving 4.8% higher than they were last year. So everybody except for Orange County, right, um, is receiving a modest amount of appreciation over as compared to last year, okay? So that, and that's really good because, you know, as we're in that normal amount of appreciation, it doesn't mean that prices are skyrocketing. And that's what we wanna tell our buyers because buyers are probably hearing a different story from the media. They're hearing that prices are going up crazy and all of that and making affordability extremely difficult. And affordability, don't get me wrong, is, is still an issue. However, prices are not rising double digits in most counties. They are staying um, in the normal range between four and 5%. So that's a good sign. And that's something that again, as the economists of, of, of the preferred economists in our database, we wanna be telling the story and we wanna be controlling the narrative um, of what's going on in the market. And this is a way that we could do that with showing proof, right? Not just talking, but showing proof as to what exactly is going on in the market. All right, and then our absorption rate. So an 18.3% increase as compared to last month. So we were at 3.3 months of inventory. Currently at 3.9 months of inventory. So in San Bernardino County, they are the closest to that normal market than any other county. And look at here, um, overall a 40.4% increase. We are at 2.7 months of inventory last year. We are currently in the year at 3.8 months of inventory. So again, very close to that normal market range. We'll continue to monitor, monitor this and hopefully we will get into that four months of inventory, which means we are at the beginning of a normal market. What does that mean, right? What does that mean? What do you guys think being in a normal market means? Tell me practically what that means. Don't be shy. You guys are the least shyest people. So stop being shy. 
What does being in a normal market mean? Would normal market be like la less competition or not even competition at all? Correct, Mazer. Very good. What else could it mean? Go ahead, Amanda. Is that, that, is that the, the the drivers of the market are death, divorce, and, and the other D's. Definitely, the drivers of the market are the are the other D's: death, divorce. Um, uh, what are what are the other the other D's of like relocation? It's people who must move. Um, um, people who must move are the drivers. But but really, Oscar, the drivers in a in a um, in a normal market. When you're in a normal market, the 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 D's and the and the people who must move they always drive the market, right? Um, but in a normal market, Amanda, you're about to say something. I don't want to. I don't want to. Um, I was going to say that the prices are going to be closer to the appraised value or like just like more um, like they're stable not prices, price. stable prices. And, and I'm sorry, Amanda, what were you about to say? Not as overpriced, not as overpriced. Absolutely. So you guys are right on it, right? In a normal market, what really what really goes on, right, is just, just like Monserrat said, you don't have all this competition. Buyers go in, they place an offer, more than likely they'll be the only offer. Houses are going to stay on the market a little bit longer. They're not just going to fly off the shelf when um, they come on the market. So you're not going to see a property on the market for 14 days or for the weekend and then it's gone, right? More than likely it'll stay on the market a little bit longer, okay? Buyers will have more choices. It'll be not just the one property It'll be a, a couple of properties that they'll have um, choices from, to choose from. Now, now, as we get into a buyer's market, as we get into a buyer's market, what happens? Prices drop. Price, prices could definitely drop. Very good, Iliadora. Uh, prices could definitely drop. What else could happen? Buyers can have more to choose from, right? Buyers can have more to choose from. Prices drop, buyers can have more to choose from, okay? And and that is going to, that is absolutely going to be of benefit uh, for our buyers. Now, are we going to get there? I'm not sure when we will get there, right? But we definitely are moving into more of a normal market space, okay? So So that's just good for you guys to know. You guys should know what the effects of a seller's market are, what the effects of a normal market are, and what the effects of a seller's or, or of a buyer's market are, right? You guys should know that and be able to rattle that off um, because as we start moving into these, you need to be able to explain to your buyers and sellers what type of market we're in overall and what that means to them, okay? All right, so average days on market has gone down 2.7% as compared to last month. We were at 37 days on market last month. We're at 36 days on market currently. And we're down 11.9% overall or as compared to last year because last year we were at 42 days on market. Currently, we're at 37 days on market overall. Sellers, they're, oh, okay, no change over last month. So sellers were receiving 98% of their list price. Um, Last month, they're receiving 98% of their list price currently. Um, no change as compared to last September at all. And then a 2% decrease as compared to last year. So sellers last year were getting 98% of their list price. Currently, sellers are receiving 96% of their list price. Okay. All right. That is it, you guys, for our four major county um, market trend update. So tell me, any questions on that? No? Okay, let's talk about our upcoming events because we do have some things that we are doing and I'm excited. So today, you guys know we have group coaching with Diana Carbajal at 12 o'clock. That is in-house and on Zoom. Um, and then tomorrow, 
we have conversations in real play again with Diana. We have our tech training at three o'clock, our regional tech training. Um, and then we also have, and that's really good to be on you guys. That is Tuesdays and Thursdays. We have regional tech training um, and it's Zoom only, but it is with our regional tech trainer. He's the master trainer. Um, and so it's really good to be on that um, because you got you guys can get a lot of good um, command training, right? We need to be experts on our technology so that we can utilize it to the fullest so that we can be, we can update our, our sellers and our buyers quickly. We can keep, we can keep in touch with our whole database without us having to do a lot of the heavy lifting. Okay. That's what it's going to do for you. Make you more efficient. Okay. But you got to be using it and it's got to be good information in there for you guys to be able to truly use it. All right, and then we have 6.30, we have Tech Workshop with Eileen. Um, and then, of course, we have Broker Hour on Wednesdays and Thursdays at 10 o'clock. So Ed is going to be going over the RLA Part 1, and then um, on Thursday, the RLA Part 2, the Residential Listing Agreement. Um, and then on, two, on Wednesday, we also have uh, Martha's back. Excited to have Martha back um, and because she's going to be doing our Tech Workshop. And actually, she's going to be going over um, her way of keeping in touch, her smart plan, how she keeps in touch with all of her database, especially her buyer leads and her buyers. OK, so her smart plan to me is genius and it utilizes her uh, it utilizes her her um, website and it utilizes her command. OK, and some automation. Basically, it's every three days, your buyer is receiving an update. And I was talking to Kim about this last week, I believe it was, that properties are bait. You guys have got to be giving your buyers what they want, which is they want to see properties. So you got to give it to them. So if they want to see properties, you got to set them up with that. So every three days, they're either getting a text with properties or they're getting an email with properties. And if you don't have their tech, you don't have their phone number, then every six days they're receiving an email. And if you don't have their email, then every six days they're receiving a text message. You get it? So every six days or every three days, they are hearing from you and they're getting a touch. Um, and yes, are people going to unsubscribe? Some are, but that means you do, they didn't want to do business anyway. Okay, but so don't worry about that. And if someone says, hey, I only want to receive them this amount of time, great. Put them on a revised smart plan so that they only receive it every six days or so, okay? Um, but definitely, to me, it's brilliant. And I've asked her to go over this and share it with us. We're going to learn it. So if you're in this tech workshop, I will be in this tech workshop. Make sure that you bring your laptops. Um, it would be preferred that you're here in person. So if you have any glitches or anything, you know, you're know you're there in person, but we will record it and it will be on Zoom. And then right after that, we have John Peterson, who's going to be in the house, and he's going to be teaching us the ABCs of lot and construction loans to grow your business. So if any of you guys have people who want to build a home or who want to buy land, John Peterson with U.S. Bank is going to be with us, and he is going to be talking about how to um, market to those individuals. He's going to be talking with us about the products that he uses, um, the qualifications, so this is going to be a good class for all of us. Um, if you, Because again, it's good for you to know a little bit about it. That way, if you do get a client who asks you about it, you can at least know something about it and be able to speak to it intelligently. And then you can direct them to John, okay? Downey Capital does not do um, lot and construction loans. That's why John is coming in. And actually, the person who is responsible for this is Jennifer Avalon, you guys. Jennifer Avalon is the one who said, hey, we really need to bring this guy in um, to talk about this so that our agents can absolutely um, have all the resources, all the tools in their toolkit so that they don't have to turn down any business. And then they, and again, they can speak intelligently um, if, if an investor or someone comes up and wants to actually um, build their own home um, and or buy a lot and build their own home, right? So this is good stuff. So be there October 2nd at two o'clock. And then you've got Victor on Thursday. Now we are making a change um, to dollar for dollars. 
So we are going to do it a little bit later. He, he teaches right now every other week. We are trying to cater to our dual career agents. So we're going to be doing this at 630 on Thursday. And then we're going to do one. We're going to do one earlier in the day. So we're going to have one for our dual career agents once a month and one for our um, agents who are full time once a month. And that'll be earlier in the day. So just keep on the lookout for that. This week's will be later. It'll be at 630. Okay. Not at five o'clock. And then um, October 8th, we have got Lacey Piccolo coming. Um, and this is going to be at the Downey Association of Realtors. Um, and we are going from 11 to 12. It is a lunch and learn. And we are, and actually, I'm sorry, John's is a lunch and learn as well on October 2nd. So we are going to be, um, we are going to be talking about how to maximize your efficiency with VAs. Okay. So using virtual assistants, um, and I don't know if you guys knew, but you can share a VA. So if there's a few of you on this call who are super busy or getting busy and you want to really leverage a virtual assistant so that you can maybe give that person database management, right? Have them manage your database. Then you can absolutely do that. And you can share that with VA with three other or two other um, agents in the office so that each of you basically take two hours a day of that virtual assistant's time. So just a thought, but Lacey is the COO of the Fred Said Group. You guys know he closes over 250 deals per year, his team, and she manages that operation. So we can learn a lot from her. I'm excited about that. So industry news, I really wanted to um, talk to you guys right now. We are, I don't know if you guys heard, how many of you guys heard about Hurricane Helene? All are you with anybody news. following that? Oscar, all, what you say? It's all over the news. All over the news. Absolutely. You guys, our families, our KW families in South Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, um, they are, they have been impacted. Um, they, their homes are underwater, literally. Um, and so we had a big push this morning on our leadership call, all KW leadership call. Um, they need our help. This is what we do. This is our culture. This is what differentiates us from everybody else. Um, all the other brokerages is that we are family and we help each other. So please, if you can, and if you can only donate a dollar, donate your dollar. If you could donate $5, $10, whatever you could donate, take a picture of this QR code or go use this QR code to go to the KW Cares. We are just asking that everybody who can please donate to this cause, um, to KW Cares. That money is going to go directly to these hurricane, um, uh, to the Hurricane Helene Relief Fund. Right now, it is desperately needed. Um, I know that we're sending water right now. We're sending um, a lot of resources right now to try to help um, those who are displaced, our, our agents who are displaced. Um, so it is, it is, um, it's devastating you guys. And, and there's a lot of KW edge agents who are impacted. So we're asking for your help. If you can, please donate. And you can even use this, you guys, to get it to your database. You can even send this out to your database and ask for donations. Okay. Um, because they are donating to people who absolutely need it. All right. So another, um, uh, some industry news. So the state of California is predicting a 10% jump in home sales next year. So um, that is excellent for us, right? That's good news. I don't know about you guys, but that is definitely good news. So uh, the home prices will also increase. $900,000 is our, is our, um, is our median home price, you guys, in the state of California. Now, again, that's across all the counties. That's across the entire state of California. Um, so some areas are going to be less than that. Some areas are going to be more than that. That's where we've got to be hyper-focused on our area because not everybody is at that 900000 price point, median price point, okay? But that is our average. So that does hinder, that makes affordability, right, uh, a challenge in some areas. Um, however, they are predicting that our sales are going to go up 10% over this year, 
which is great because we need to see more closings. That means when, we, when we're looking at that, those closings week over week, year over year, we should see those closings um, increase as compared to 2024, all righty? So, um, so that is just good news. Um, and I want you guys to be looking at that because that means more business. What does that translate into? More business for those who are out there doing business, all righty? Uh, and then if you're looking for investment opportunities, they were saying that Florida, North Carolina, Texas, they dominate um, the, the markets for investors. So if you're looking for, if you're looking, if your investors are talking about, hey, Oscar, I would love to invest, but I want to go out of state. Well, here are the top 10 best markets, Miami, Florida, Tampa, Florida, Charlotte, North Carolina, Raleigh, North Carolina, Phoenix, Arizona. Orlando, Florida, Austin, Texas, Nashville, Tennessee, Dallas, Texas, and Jacksonville, Florida. Okay, so this is based on annual price growth, personal income, population growth. Um, this basically prices in these areas um, and their growth um, and everything is actually are the best states, um, cities and states for actually your investors. Okay, if they're looking for opportunities, these are the best markets currently. OK. Um, and they said Texas and Arizona have seen the steepest drops in home prices since their peak. OK, so if they're looking for where are prices dropping, you can let them know Texas and Arizona have seen the steepest price drops since their peak. OK, so again, that's great information if you guys want to be a resource to the people in your database and you know that there you've got a few investors in there, even new investors, you can help them by providing them with this information. And also if they're serious, what do we want to do? We know we can't do, we can't sell in those areas, but what can we do? Refer. Thank you. We can refer. Get them, Monzer. Uh, we can refer to, we can refer them to agents in those areas um, and you can make a 25% or whatever referral fee, okay? Because it, yes, 25% is the normal amount, um, but you can also ask for more. And some of these agents have, they're already offering more, okay? Between 25 and 30, that's about what's normal. And that is it for the day, guys. Um, thank you guys so much for being here. Any questions before we go? No, we're good. All right. Well, thank you guys again. I hope you have a great Monday and we'll see you definitely tomorrow. Um, thank and you, and have a great week. Let me know if you need anything. Thank, thank you, Brandy. You're welcome. Awesome. Thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye, guys. Bye. Thank you, Brandy. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.